What's going on, everyone? It's Adam and Craig with Grandstand Golf. In this show, we're doing our PGA DFS sleepers for the 2021 Waste Management Phoenix Open, the People's Open. Looking back at last week, you know, we see videos out there, articles out there, people are giving you sleepers, low nines in the eights, high sevens. That's not what we do. Sometimes we, sometimes we see guys top five pricing, they call sleepers, but... Top five pricing. We give you sleepers 7,500 and below. Last week, we had six sleepers, average salary 68.50. Six of six make cuts, average finishing position, 34. Those are the kind of guys you need to fill out your DraftKings lineups. Yep. Um, yeah. And, you know, as always, the caveat that uh, don't necessarily play all six of these guys. But maybe last Although week you would have yeah, you would have got six of six through. It would have been a lot better than a lot of my lineups. But, yeah, subscribe, like, and share. We really appreciate the support. Our sleepers, we like to dig in the bottom. We're a little bit higher, I think, this week. But I think we've got some good little nuggets. Yeah, let's jump into it. Let's do it. My first, I talked about a Canadian on our pick show. I'm going to another Canadian here, Adam Hadwin. He's 7,300 on DraftKings. He's 37th. I've actually, my sleepers are really priced differently on FanDuel. He's 8,600. He's 48th. So potentially really good value on uh, FanDuel. Good start to 2021. 32nd at the Amex. 18th, a top 20 at the Farmers. His history at the Waste Management Phoenix Open is good. Six starts, two top 20s, one missed cut. So five times out of six, he's through to the weekend. He's a Canadian, but if you if you have him on Instagram, if you have him on Twitter, he lives in the desert. He's a Scottsdale resident. Obviously knows the area well, golfs here all the time. Concerns with Adam Hadwin. If you look at our Grandstand Golf model on our website, his strokes and approach have not been good. It's one of the worst approach stats we've seen of his career. He's putting the ball really, really well. If he can turn that around at all, even with a top 20 in the Farmers, he lost strokes in approach. If he can turn that around at all on a course that he clearly plays well at, I think he can be a really good play at 7,300 on DraftKings. Even better on FanDuel at 8,600. Yeah, yeah. And I would think one of the things to to think about with that too is, you know, at uh, Torrey Pines, when we're thinking about strokes in approach, we usually think about, you know, people hitting wedges in tight and all that kind of thing. But at Torrey Pines, we're talking about a lot of longer irons or, or you know, uh, yeah. fairway woods into par fives and those type of things. And so, um, you know, comparing... He's not the guy that's hitting a gap wedge into par fives. For well, no, and, and but <laughs> like, I think that he probably is a better short iron guy. I, I, I haven't looked into the numbers, but I, I would think he's probably, you know, relative to other PGA Tour pros. I don't think his strength yeah. is in being the best guy from 225, 250 yards out hitting into right. greens. Right. So right. I, I think a course like TPC Scottsdale might suit him uh, more than Torrey Pines did. So you take his 18th place there Absolutely, and, yeah. and you kind of put it onto a course that, that potentially fits him better. And even if the stats aren't there, like he, he didn't, lo- he still lost tricks, but he didn't lose a lot. The top 20, that's momentum. Yeah. It's, a, it's a momentum. And, and I mean, last off, as anyone who's listened to us for a while now, we'll always find a way to rationalize a good Canadian pick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, my first one here, another guy, uh, you know, We've been talking about a lot recently, I think. Chris Kirk, 7,500 on DraftKings, 31st there, 8,900 on FanDuel, 39th there. Uh, The reason we've been talking about a lot is because he's been playing well, really good golf. Uh, Three top 20s in his last four starts. Uh, He's got six straight cuts made, uh, and he's made 10 of his last 12. So, you know, I, I, I think that... You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, you know larger story around Chris Kirk um, with his whole you know depression and, and alcoholism and, totally, and sort totally. of re, yeah. uh, returning from that. And I think that we're yeah. seeing now that that it's showing up on the golf course that he his his yeah. game is showing up in a big way. Um, he has a good history at uh, the waste management. He's made seven of nine cuts. Uh, he has a high finish of eleventh, and that was in 2018. So, you know. Yeah. I think uh, I like the made cuts number better than the fact that his high high finish is 11th. I mean, it means that he can get up there, but it also like, you know, se- if, if you're making the cut seven times, I'd like to see you sneak it up there yeah. quite a bit more. Yeah. But uh, I, I think it's still, to me, it's a good course history. Um, you know, looking at him, he's 31st on DraftKings, 39th on FanDuel. You look at his stats yeah. for 2020, 2021. Exactly. And this is sort of where I'm looking at the, you know, the idea that maybe his game is in better shape than his pricing. This is just the pure value yeah, argument. Yeah. In this field, yeah. his strokes gain total 18th at you know just over his strokes. His tee to green, which yeah. 
you know, if I'm looking at one stat other than stroke screen total, T to green is usually the one I like the most. 18th there as well, just under a stroke around. Uh, last one, the, the most important one that showed up in our model was stroke screen approach. He's plus 0.7 there, and that's 12th in the field. So, you know, all the yeah. signs, all the metrics point to this being a good play. Uh, so to me, it's it's probably, of my plays, it's probably the safest one. And for that reason, it might be ownership. Ownership might creep up there a bit. I I, I don't know if ownership will, because his price, I mean, yeah, if he's at 7,000, I think so. At 7,500, you're still in the middle of the field, kind of middle of the pack, 31st rank. His price has gone up but over I, the last few weeks. It has for sure, and for for good reason. I I still think he's. I think he has that ceiling. Like if you look at his career, he does win. He, well, he he's was a winner. What, second place uh, three weeks ago, I guess, at the Sony, Sony Open. Open. Yeah, yeah. I, I love the play. I think it's both floor and ceiling for where he is in his um, kind of career in his momentum. Yep. Sounds like we're on board. <laughs> okay, we're on board. My next pick here, Benny Ann. So this was the interesting pricing. Exact same price as Adam Hatterwood on DraftKings. He's 7300 37th there. But on FanDuel, he's $800 more. He's 9400 at 28th. So maybe potentially better DraftKings play. That's for you to, that's for you to decide. Last six months, uh, we know his ball striking is pretty good. Ranks 23rd in the, in the field in strokes in T to green plus 1.08. Again, looking at the 37th number on DraftKings. That's just pure value. His four starts at the Phoenix Open are remarkable. He plays his course really well. Four starts, four top 25s, two top 10s, 68.38 scoring average. That's one of the best in the field of anybody that's higher than Daniel Berger with 22 rounds. I talked about Xander with his record here. I mean, that's an elite, elite scoring average here. Looking at his form coming in, he's pretty. He's playing pretty good golf, as you can see by the strokes gain numbers. But this is the first time in his five trips, so this is his fifth trip, that he is a top 10 in the previous two months entering. So he has a top 10. But and that was at the American Express, I think. Before. American Which Express. Which was right. also in the desert. Uh. <laughs> also in the desert. We, we know the story with Benny Ann. We need that putter to come around. If the putter comes around, this is a ceiling play. It's a risky play, but it can be a ceiling play because his ball striking stats are so good. It is a risky play, though. I'm not going to hide away from that fact, but I'm still going to play him. Yeah, so, you know, the way I, I first try to, to select picks, I look, you know, first off at the value that, that our model and just basic strokes gain stats pick up, uh, spit out. And yeah. then I look at course history and if see, see if anyone really jumps out in terms of course history. And he was the guy that, like, to me, I was like, man, this guy's course history is awesome. Like, <laughs> I don't understand why, but that's something I want a piece of. So um, I do think that, uh, and, and I think it's the reality of, plays in this area is that it's more volatile than than you know we're talking about with Xander and Z JT in our other video so um yeah yeah but I, I think just the fact that he she shows up here it seems like every year and performs that it gives <laughs> you like you, you kind of want to have him in your pool yeah yeah at, at least a little yeah. slice you have to have some slice. Yeah. yeah uh my next one here I'm going Martin Laird and this one this one to me was one that you know as I was going through things it surprised me that I ended up with Martin Laird here as hey, my pick, but, uh, like... but here we are. 7,000 on DraftKings, he's 50th most expensive. 8,400 on FanDuel, he's 56th there. Uh, form coming in, uh, he had the win at Shriners, which, you know, again, where's Shriners? It's in the desert, so yeah, there we go, <laughs> desert golf. Uh, he's made go. cuts in four of seven. At first, I was thinking it was five of eight, but then I, I realized that one of them was no cut event, so uh, it is only four of seven. So, you know, we've seen upside, yeah. but we've also seen what, you, you put that another way, he's missed three cuts in his last seven. So, you know, his form is not the best, but obviously there is the upside there. Uh, of course, yeah. history though, he's made nine of last 10 cuts. Uh, he, he has been here for even longer than that, but, uh, my, I, I start to think after we're, we're 11, 12, 13 years ago, it makes less and less sense to make sense of it. But 90% yeah. cut rate over the last 10 years. So that's pretty darn good. When he has made the cut, his average finish is 25.1. Uh, I like that number. If you think that typically we're getting 70 guys making the cut, um, 25.1 in nine cuts yeah. made, that's pretty darn good. Uh, four yeah. top tens. So he shows up here 10 times, last 10 years, he's made four top tens. 40%. I like it. it. You know, 
In terms of, of course, history, it's not quite as consistent as Benny Ann, but uh, it, but it's pretty darn good. Um, yeah. Why is that? Well, he's a Scottsdale resident. This is, you know, as I, as I dive it. a little bit deeper. So I, I think there's quite a few guys who, I'm pretty sure these TPC courses, um, they're set up sort of to be good practice facilities for these guys. So I think that sure. he probably sure. plays a ton of golf at this course. Yeah. Um, and last thing... You know, there's nothing that Martin Laird does statistically that really jumps out and punches you in the face. Um, and and that's sort of, I think, why he, you know, he didn't have status, I don't think, until until yeah. he had that win at the Shiners. So, um, but you look at his 2020-2021 season, he's positive in all categories. So it is one of these things where then when he has his week that he trends up, it, it's not like there's any weaknesses he has to overcome. He just, you know, he does a few things a little bit better. He's on course. It's a little bit more familiar. I think it just, to me, it, it's, again, it's just a, a squeezing a little bit more value out of there than I think his, his price is. Yeah. I mean, I've been playing him for a little while. He seems like he's, he's in good form. Uh, I love the Scottsdale thing. I love the course history. He just screams kind of fairways and greens to me. I think his greens and regulation is one of the best in tour. Um, I would have to double check that, of course, but I, I like to play. He's gonna make. He's kind of. You're gonna say he's gonna make the cut, and then you're like, oh, maybe I won't say that for sure. No, I'm not gonna say that. He's gonna make my player pool. Oh, okay. Um, I like the price of seven thousand. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Okay, last one, Adam. All right, Scottsdale, Scottsdale, Matt Jones, drafting 6,900. So my, I know I went low last week. He's my only one in six games this week. He's 55th there. FanDuel, 8,600. He's 48th. Just kind of sneaky good form. Again, looking at our grandstand golf model, we have the strokes uh data from previous tournaments. Three straight events, positive strokes game putting, positive strokes game approach. Two highest indicators on our model for this week for the Phoenix Open. Seven straight main cuts, three top 25s, one top five. So he's been playing really good. He's kind of coming in in great form since 2014. So yeah, again, another guy that has tons of history here, but looking at just the past five events, one top 20, one missed cut. So four to five, he's making the weekend. One top 20, a, a, a smattering of kind of 40th type finishes for him. Not great, but he's making the weekend for, I mean, pretty good for those results. This is the best year he's had in a while. His money earned already on this season is kind of like where he was 2018, 2019 for the full for the season. Complete yeah. Seasons. yeah. So he's playing well. And then again, looking at that kind of local angle, ASU alum, not, I mean, people will think of Phil, people will think of Rom, but Matt Jones, he played here. He, he was a good player. I mean, he so might again, be up there local. in the annals of ASU history, right? With Rom and, and Phil. There you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I, I think a kind of a sneaky play upside, good form, familiarity it all kind of it's good for 6900 I, I like to play at 6900 yeah um yeah he's someone that i've been sort of flirting with and he's been one of my last cuts from my pit player pool in the last little bit um i i don't know for sure yet uh this is we're into the range where there's usually so many guys that i like and you have to make hard yeah. cuts i don't know for yeah. sure yet whether or not he'll be in mine uh just because i haven't done the deep dive into everyone around there yet um but <laughs> sure. i'll let you know hey, for sure on wednesday i do do like his form um i do think that because i you know it, those I, sometimes i feel like i pay more attention to the guys that just miss my player pool than i do the guys who have yeah. just made my player yeah, pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um yeah. and yeah. so I, I have been aware that he has been been making a lot of cuts when other guys i've chosen sure. have been missing them um but uh, yeah I'll, I'll let you know for sure on wednesday whether or not he's in my pool all right. um all right. my last right. one here sure. this is definitely my most volatile sleeper this week um but i think potentially the most, uh, the highest upside. Uh, I'm looking at Doc Redman, 6,600 on DraftKings, 72nd overall, 8,200 on FanDuel, 64th there. So to me, it's all about volatility right now with Doc Redman. Yeah. You look at yeah. his last 10 starts, he's got three top fives, and you know most of those are a little bit further back in those 10 starts, and he's got four yeah. missed cuts. Um, so... It's just, uh, I mean, right there, that kind of paints the picture. Um, he's yeah. got three of the last ten. He's been in right in contention. Four, he's been totally out of it. The other three, yeah, maybe somewhere in the middle. It's either like a weekend off or a hundred thousand yeah, dollar yeah, payday yeah. for him. It, it's like, actually in terms of making money as a golfer, you'd rather be that than just making the cut every yeah. week. But uh, yeah. um, you look at so. 
you know, on our in our, in the model on our website, we have different ways you can look at value. You can look at just strokes in yeah. total uh, for the 2020 2021 season. You can look at our model, yeah. which you know takes into account it skews all of the strokes gain oh, number into right what we in. think does well at this tournament. Um, or you can look at 2019 2020. Gives you a little bit more idea of their long term form. And on that, he's the number three value in the whole field. So if you do think that the person we saw sort of for that full year from late 2019 through September 2020 is more what to expect yeah. from Doc Redman, then he's the number three value. Um, he, you know, very, very small course history here. Uh, he's th yeah. 34th in his only start. Um, but to me, this is this is a little bit of a, a game theory or like risk strategy type. I think the risk of him, uh, he, you know, he's he seems to be falling down the pricing structure right now. Yeah, and yeah, so, yeah. Oh, yeah, it, you know, it's sort of like stocks. Do you want to try to catch that falling stock and, and and find where it's hitting bottom and coming back up? Or do you just want to let it fall and then see it rebound before you go in there? Um, I'm going to I'm going to try to catch low, it. Or are we waiting till it hits rock bottom? Yeah. Like, what are we doing yeah, here? So I'm going to try to catch it with Doc Redman just because yeah. I think his upside, you know, if it. If it is the rebound, it could be a rebound right into a top 10, whereas some guys you feel like yeah. you're going to rebound into, okay, he'll make the cut and be in 50th, he'll, you know, but I yeah. think that it's the upside that gives me, um, I'll, I'll put a little bit of equity into him having yeah. that big rebound into a top 10. Love the upside. I mean, a guy we've talked about quite a bit, especially when he was on his kind of tear in late summer, early fall, I believe it was. Um, Another just interesting to watch. I think he won the USM at Riviera. Riviera is coming up in a couple of weeks, so interesting to see if his form does build as well. Like he, if he's not in my player pool, it's a guy I'm gonna kind of pay star attention to. on the yeah. leaderboard. And pay attention to for sure. I think Joe, his price, it's either a trap or it. I mean, it's a steal, and I feel like I got to have a little bit. I don't know how much, but it, it does yeah, seem like, like really it. good value. <laughs> it does seem like it's screaming value. That's for sure. So we've teased it. We have our show Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern on YouTube Live. Come check us out then. We have our model. We'll go through the entire field. We'll chat. Talk about any players you want. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. We really do appreciate it. Let us know your favorite sleeper, 7,500 and below on DraftKings. Yep. We'll see you guys next time. Take care. Take care. See ya.